It's a Mari Summer. What up, world? Welcome to another episode of RMT. That's Real Men Talk. It's your boy, Stan the Man. I got my boy EIG in the building. What's good? What's good? We in here tonight, Doc. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, man, we about to get started with another conversation piece with y'all today. And so before we even get started, I just want to give a shout out. Thank you for tuning in and listening to us. And if you want to listen to us after this, you can check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts as well. That's Real Men Talk. Just look us up on all the streaming platforms, Real Men Talk Podcast, and you can catch me and EI in your ear, on your phone, on your computer, even on your TV, whenever you like, all right? Yeah. So, <laughs> before we even get started, let me let me say this. I want to, I want to, I got a, I got a special shout out, man. I got a Come special shout it. out. And I got to give, I got to give, I got to give a shout out to the, the producers and the, um, the executive producer, the creative crew, you know, and I have to get that shout out to my two daughters, Sasha and Samantha, especially my daughter, Sasha, been there giving me a crash course on everything. So everything that y'all see me bring to y'all out here on these platforms, that's been my baby girls behind the producing the setting up the cameras and making sure the angles look yeah. good. All there for dad, man. So shout out to them. Man. Yes, sir. Shout out, Sasha and Sam. Shout out. Yes, Keep sir. them in mind, y'all. Keep yes, him in mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Before we get started, man, you got any, any shout outs? Man, yeah, definitely. Of course, always the viewers, always the listeners. Thank y'all. Shout out to y'all every time. Uh, but today, man, I just want to give a shout out to God, you know, mm -hmm. for me knowing God, God being in me, working through me, working as me, man. However, however anybody wants to you know, define, label it, but I'm just, I want to give a shout out to God because man, I'm still here. You know, I don't have to, you know, cry about a sad story, mm -hmm. nothing like that. You know, we all had things happen. We all had tragedies, man, yeah. but, but we still here. And if yeah. we here, man, Hey, it don't get better than that. So shout out to God, G O D. Yes, sir. The biggest shout out because that's what we all need, and yes, and sir. with with that, we definitely gonna need God going into this conversation. So guide us, Lord, because on today we're gonna talk about family matters. Family Ooh, matters. We and family. it's a couple of different directions that we can go with it. You know, with family, man, you, you know, uh, at family sometimes it can be a love and a hate situation with family and mm -hmm. um I, I i remember david and david and, he, and his brothers and his brothers sold him into captivity and you know being sold into captivity by people that supposedly love you yeah. man that can be a hard pill to swallow to the point where the next time they see you they saw david they didn't even know who david was he was mm -hmm. second in command over egypt second in command only was under pharaoh that was it that's the only person that he had to answer to and so his joke. brother sold him into joke. captivity huh so you talking you about said, joseph oh joseph yeah 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 my bad yeah. my bad i'm talking yeah, about yeah, David, i just didn't man. want, I, didn't want, I, didn't want I, appreciate, I appreciate you man appreciate you yeah Problem, joseph man joseph man i'm talking yeah, about Doug, I, I just wanted to make sure that was clear for the listeners man <laughs> yeah joseph man joseph and so uh, the next time they saw, let me go back. So I got to get it right. So Joseph was sold into captivity mm -hmm. by his brothers. And so Joseph became second in command over Egypt, second to only Pharaoh. Right. And so it became a phantom over the land and his brothers had to travel to Egypt in order to get food and they didn't even recognize him. So Joseph was mad. And I know a lot of you all out there that experienced the same thing that Joseph experienced. And that's your family probably sold you out on some things. Or they probably did some things that hurt you to the point 
Well, you haven't saw them in years. You haven't talked to them in years. You haven't communicated with them in years. And, you know, after doing all that, then you got the flip side of it. You got getting married. You going into situations where you bringing in a whole nother side of the family in. Whole new people, you know, that, that you got to learn. They don't know you. They just know you from marrying a they wife i mean marrying a wife marrying a daughter or marrying a <laughs> <their> son <laughs> marrying a daughter or marrying a son they don't know you from a can of paint they just trusting off what he or she is saying about you so now you got a whole nother family that you got to learn to love and you know and start to enjoy so before i get any deeper into this man e i want to bring you in and I want to get just your thoughts and, you know, your opinions on family matters, man. Man, family matters. You know, that's, that's universal all the way. It don't get more universal than that, man, because we all got family. And I'm pretty sure most of us have experienced, you know, bad times, what we would consider, you know, issues, beef, drama, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. But... You know, I think with, with family, man, one thing that if we could understand more is that we can love each other and not be, you know, people pleasers. And what I mean by that is mm-hmm. a lot of us think that me loving my family is maybe me doing the things that they want me to do. Yeah. Maybe they, maybe they want me to love them a certain way or to spend certain time. And that's okay if I'm capable, but if, but if you're not, if doing certain things and being certain ways is not you, it doesn't feel right to you, you're not your true self, then you don't have to feel guilty about it. But we do with family because, you know, it's family, you know? Right. And we have to understand that we can love each other without it just being what one person wants or what the other one wants. Mm-hmm. You know, accept each other where everyone is. If, it, if it's working, it's working. If it doesn't work, it's not working. That doesn't change, you know, love. Right. And it shouldn't yep. family anyway. You know, they always say, mm-hmm. hey, blood thicker than mud. Well, mm-hmm. if it, well, if it truly is, then that means that, hey, me loving you is bigger than any words, any text, any phone conversation, any dinner we sat at. So I'm not saying that we don't have to do those things. It's cool to do it. But don't feel guilty about, you know, having to say no to family sometimes. Don't feel mm-hmm. guilty about maybe, you know, you're not choosing to do something in your household that maybe an in-law wants, you know, you or your wife to do. Maybe mm-hmm. it could be your kids. Could be anything. Could be your finances. It could be, you know, family members that you want to help out. You want to bring somebody in to stay maybe. And now you're irritated. Now you're frustrated, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you go on. And sometimes we had to make change. Sometimes it's it's time to tell, you know, hey, Uncle Ray, <laughs> man, it's been it's a time. Yeah. It's been a year, bro. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, man. It's it's it, it, that's okay. You know, I'm not saying for us to be gullible and be naive. Right. You know, because we do have to stand up for our own well being, what goes on in our house. I can't I can't be a great cousin, a great brother, a great father if I'm not okay. Yep. And if I'm steady chasing what family wants me to do mm-hmm. all the time, if I'm stressed out because I'm doing something that I really don't want to do, but I don't want to look away to my family, mm-hmm. it's time to, you know, set ourselves free in 23, man. You know, yeah. uh, it, it, and it's, it's a sensitive and delicate issue because you do love them. You have spent time, grew mm-hmm. up together, you know, all the memories we have, but, I think if we can be transparent with family, you know, no matter what, we'll just be transparent and not put emotions in the mix. I can tell you it's time to go without cussing you out saying, get off my couch. I can tell you that I don't want to do that without dodging you and not responding to your messages, not, you know, acting like we don't know each other. So mm-hmm. we just have to learn a, a better love language. I feel, man. So I know that was long winded, brother. But no, 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 no. You good, man? Because I want, I want you to make sure that you uh, lay down the foundation of um of what we're speaking about tonight. And the great thing about family is that 
with family, you taught a lot of different lessons dealing with your family. And I think the first biggest lesson is that, that you learn from family is love. Mm. It'll be love. It'll be the first, the biggest thing that you'll learn from family. And so, and then it could go both ways. You can love some parts. You can love people so much that you're blinded. And when, especially when it comes to family, you let family get away with a little bit more and you'll let an outside person get away with. Mm -hmm. So let me sit there for a minute because even when you said they stand with you, they might be borrowed money, they might be, um, they might be just totally a leech or taking advantage of you because they know they love that you love them. Mm -hmm. So they know that you're not going to let them get in a cer certain circumstance. Right. And you're not coming to help them. And so with dealing with family, they can take their love for granted at times because they know how much you love them, know how much you care about them. And they know that you don't want to see them in a situation where they're hurt. And even sometimes it'll be like, I don't want to make the family look bad because if you looking bad, you're going to make the family look bad. Mm, that's good there, bro. You're going to make the family look bad. So I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that my family member is looking good because I got an image to uphold. This family got an image to uphold. You mm. dragging our name down, brother. Man, family image. You on them drugs dragging our name down. You drinking, um, tearing our name down. You mm. getting pregnant at that young age, tearing our name down. Mm. You smoking weed, tearing our name down. Mm -hmm. Girl, you sleeping with multiple guys, tearing our name down. We preaching in here tonight, Doc. You know, and so when, the, when those things happen, we seem to forget how to love that individual through that. And all love is not, I'm caring, I'm going to do everything. Sometimes you have to show different individuals tough love. Mm -hmm. So we went through the caring love. Now we're going through tough love with family. Yeah. Because just because I love you, now I got to let you live your life, man. Yeah. Because my love is overextending and that my family is missing out now. So right. if I got, just say if I'm my brother, my uncle, or whoever the family member might be, that I'm overextending myself now, I'm missing out time with my family. Mm -hmm. I'm taking money away from my family. But if I show you tough love, I'm going to still look out for you. I'm going to still make sure you're good. But it's a thing that you're going to have to learn for yourself in order, you're going to have to start loving yourself in order to understand the love that I'm trying to give to you. Because if you don't have that love for yourself, you'll never understand the type of love that I want to give to you. And, and it, we can't never love each other. It's always going to be different. But once you start to love yourself and get whatever that's going on with, with you out of it and start respecting the family name and come back, then you'll understand the love that I'm trying to give not only the tough love, but the caring love that I have to offer as well. So, man. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> hey, that, that, that was good stuff, man. You hit on so many good points, man. I'm going to let it go. Mm -hmm. I just want to say this real quick. Yeah, go for it, man. And with family, man, if, if, if you can overcome the family issues. Yeah. I mean, you can kill it in the world. Because think about it. Somebody could that you don't know could come and say, Hey man, you know, I don't like you. And you might say, well, I don't like you. Or you might do something else. I don't know. But to hear your cousin or your mother or brother or sister, whatever it is, someone, and they could say the same words and say, I don't like you. And then it, it's a whole different thing. And yep. it's a whole different thing because it's somebody that we're close to somebody that we're attached to. And so if yeah. we can overcome these little battles that we have with family, man, do you know what you could do on your job? You know what you could do in the world? Because it's hardest right there in the circle. It's hardest right there with family, the people that you love, that you got to sit there and you're in conflict with yourself on, you know, what's right, what's wrong, the family name, the family image, and yeah. then your own personal well-being. 
Mm-hmm. So if we can stay in the gym at home, yeah, you know, do the things, practice what we're preaching at home and our marriages and our families mm-hmm. with, you know, with any close ones, practicing there is is the best practice you could get. Oh yeah. That's the best that's place good. to start because you that's know that's good. that's putting that's that's actually proof in the pudding. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody that knows has has this had to overcome something that's you know difficult because it sounds pretty and cute to say, hey, turn the other cheek and love them. It sounds good, you know, that's that's good clicks, views, and all of that. But mm-hmm. have you truly done that? Have you truly practiced that with family members that maybe what you thought violated you, disrespected you, slighted you? So mm-hmm. Working there, starting with family, oh, man, you'll be a great wife, a great husband, a great father, a great brother, a great whatever it is that you want to accomplish because the hardest place to do it, you've already mastered it. So I just wanted to say that, man. Man, they're right there, man. You you kind of you kind of hit a nerve. You kind of hit a nerve. And, you know, while you were speaking, man, I was kind of praying over here to myself to see if I were actually wanted to share this. But since since I love you, I'm going to go ahead and share this. But um, I don't know if a lot of people know, but here about a year ago, you know, I lost both of my parents within two weeks of each other. And so within losing my parents, me and my siblings had a spout, you know, we had a misunderstanding and for, I say probably about a good year, you know, I really didn't talk to my siblings. I might've texted them here and there, but any physical, I, I didn't, I didn't see them. Nieces and nephews, I didn't see them. I didn't talk to them. And <clears throat> did I have good reasons? I could say because of me, I could say, yeah, I had good reasons. They could have said they had good reason on their end as well. But I don't think it's nothing that could have been rectified. Um, it, It's something that could have been rectified by just having a conversation, you mm-hmm. know. And so it was a lot of misunderstanding there. So me not talking to my siblings to the point where, you know, my sister, my older sister, she had um cancer. You know, she had stage five and she had, she was fighting it. Mm-hmm. And with her fighting cancer, she had called COVID at the time. She was in the hospital. Mm-hmm. So her being in the hospital, you know, come to find out while she in the hospital, her husband passed away. Mm-hmm. And her husband passing away. And I hadn't talked to my sister in a year. I had talked to her, but most of the time we, we when we talked, we was arguing. Yeah. First time I actually talked to my sister in over a year <clears throat> was um picking her up from the hospital, taking her home, and telling her that her husband had passed. Wow. My first time talking to her. Wow. And so out of all that bitterness, out of bickering back and forth at that moment. You know, everything seemed it wasn't nothing because it was about me being there for my sister. So any feelings or personal feelings that I had at that time, I had to put them on the back burner. Right. I had to put them on the back burner. And so going into that situation and talking to, you know, my siblings after all of this has went on, you know, missing out on time you know, all stuff that could have been, you know, stopped by a couple of conversation or maybe not, maybe so. But to waste all that time off of nothing, man. And when you say not talking to them and then not only not talking to them, but going down there, <clears throat> being in the, the funeral of my, my, my sister, husband, being in the funeral of them, and people around us know we at odds, but I said, it's time for God to show out. So me going in there, going to the funeral, being there for my sister, it shows so many other people around 
how big God is inside of me and how he can be in other people. Because wow. if he can do that for Stan, if Stan can put aside all his selfish ways, his his feelings, and make sure that he here for other people, that is that speak more volumes than any other any other thing that I could have said. Wow. By going there and being able to do that. So man, I, I just want to to share that, man. And you know, <clears throat> it's kind of tough because I don't share a lot of stuff because a lot of stuff that I go through, you know, I just show people and they'll see a lot of the things that I go through. Yeah. And so I don't never share it out. And then I have multiple stories, multiple situations that I done just went through, you know, with my family members, with uncle, aunts, cousins, just, just everybody, you know? Yeah. But I just say this, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going I'm to step off of it, but don't let situation go so far till you have to take somebody passing to bring you back together. Yeah. When a conversation could do, you know? Yeah. So yeah, man. Hey, that was awesome, man. That, that took, that, that takes courage to share that. And it shows character and just you seeing your own ways, you know, self-reflecting and, and, and choosing to step over that, choosing to fight through. Man, yep. oh man, salute to you for that, bro. Real talk. Oh yeah, oh yeah, man. Yeah, I just, <clears throat> you know, man, I, I just want to be as, as transparent with the listeners as possible. Like we real people. Yeah. We yeah. get on here and we set some encouraging stuff on a lot of episodes and we be like, yeah, you can do this. You can do that. You can do that. But like y'all be wanting some receipts. Like I just, I just gave you some receipts. Like you can go right and, and <laughs> I ain't going to say you can go and Google it, but you can go and ask some family members. You can ask different people. You can go ask them, yeah. you know, you, you can go ask them and, and, and you can see, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. I ain't got to lie about nothing on here. Nothing, you know, right. so on. Uh, <clears throat> that's it, man. I, my, my bad, man. I'm going to uh, <laughs> I'm gonna take man and, you know, I'm going to get off the interstate right now, man. Let my windows down, man. We're going to go around here to EI's corner, man. <laughs> Thank y'all. You know what I'm saying? Thank y'all for joining another segment. Here with your boy EIG. You know what I mean? And so we got to get to it right you now. Thanks to listeners and the viewers already. But right now, I want to speak life in the still a nation. Black and yellow, baby. Oh, man. You know what I mean? Now, listen, let me tell y'all. Y'all keep y'all heads up. Yeah, we didn't make the playoff. You said now, what now? <laughs> we didn't make the, the playoff. The mic, miss. You said what? Yeah, yeah. You make them. <laughs> I need producers to cut this mic, man. Cut this guy's mic. But now, I, I, I feed and clothe the producers of the show, so. <laughs> man. Go ahead, man. But, 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 you, but, but anyway, y'all. <laughs> Still a nation. We didn't make the playoffs, but we got a winning record. Hey, it was nine and eight for what it was. I'm, I'm positive. I'm good about it. So. Hey, yeah. Now listen to people like Stan the Man. Stay away. Man. I like that. But anyway, <laughs> real talk, y'all. Let's get to it real quick, real quick, man. Man. Ah, man. Okay. I got this section called Classy or Trashy. Or Trashy or Classy, all right? Okay. And, and let me let me let me just bring up a scenario, man, and then I want you to tell me, Stan, if you figure if you thought that hey, the response of this person was, you know, a trashy move or classy move. You ready? Ready. All right, all right. So Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. All right, he accepts the Golden Globe Award. Right. So when he get up there for the speech, mm-hmm. get up there and he say, you know, he's talking to the new comedians, the new upcoming whomever, you know, telling them things to do to, I guess it's more like encouragement or staying, you know, this is how you be successful. But he said three things to him, man. Right. He said, one, pay your taxes. Mm-hmm. Two, mind your business. 
Mm-hmm. And he said three. He said keep Will Smith's Will Smith's wife's name out your bleepity bleep mouth. You know what I mean? So it was a joke, right? Right. Ha, 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 ha. You know what I mean? Like, okay, joke. It was good. You know, we know what's happened. Some people, hey, is it too soon? You know, should he be doing it? Was that low down? Right. So, to me, man, I want. Well, I want to ask you. Mm-hmm. That Eddie Murphy move was that? You know, did you have a problem with it? Would you say it's trash or that's classic? Nah, I won't have no problem. He a comedian, man. That's what they do. If he didn't, if he didn't make a joke, man, it would. But you gotta, un- you gotta understand in that world though, like the way comedians think, like that stuff funny to him, you know. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say classy, man. Classic move. He didn't downgrade Will. He ain't downgrade uh, Chris. Hey, classic move, man. For real. Hey, man, I gotta agree with you on that one, man. I said classy and not because he, you know, just because I don't think it was trashy. Yeah, you know, no. Comedian, the joke wasn't, you know, like you said, it wasn't demeaning in any kind of way. Yep. He joked about something that happened for the public to see. Yep. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, that's some of the stuff Will Smith and his family will have to endure is just people saying whatever and jokes. I mean, that happens to everybody that's happened all through history. So, oh, yeah. you know, I just wanted to know what you thought about that trash or classy. I mean, y'all don't beat up. Don't get too hard on Eddie, man. I ain't. I hadn't paid attention to what the consensus is, but hey, it was a joke, and to me, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't distasteful. It was. It was done classy, you know. And, you know, shedding light in a moment where you know we we acted like we acted. So, right. Anyway, last <laughs> thing I'm gonna say today, y'all. And then I'm getting out of here. If you're out there, find somewhere. Some kind of charity work. And if it ain't charity work, maybe it's, you know, you are giving, you know, monetary means. Or yeah. maybe you're doing some community service. Maybe you're passing out lunches somewhere. Maybe tithing at a church and giving offering, whatever it is. But put that seed out there for you to just get back what you're sowing and just raise the overall level of everybody's awareness on, hey, let's put love in the world. So, man, that's all I got from the corner, man. Y'all can put the top back up, man. And, you know, man, hit the freeway, send it back to Stan. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's all I got for y'all. Yeah, appreciate y'all joining in with us tonight, taking out time, a yeah, day to come and listen to RMT. We appreciate it. Um, and that's all I got. And uh, we'll see y'all next week. Hey. Hey.